So now we're going to talk about um, what it means to have an exponent of zero or if your exponent is negative. So to talk about um, the exponent of zero, I want to show you guys this. So think about um, this. No, not that. Be a pen. Come on, pen. Be a pen. Okay. Um, X to the third. I want to think about it like this. So um, that's three factors of X, right? But remember I said everything is times one. So I'm going to write it like this. One times X times X times X. Right? Everybody agree that X to the third power is equal to one times three factors of X? Okay. So then X squared would be one times just two factors of X. X to the first power is one times just one power, one factor of X. X to the zero power is one times no factors of X. And then X to the negative one power, that is going to be, so the negative of an exponent means like, Think about a fraction bar, like a negative, this, this negative up here on the exponent, think of it, try to let it remember you as, of a fraction bar, because what that means is, that's how many factors you have in the denominator. So we still have a one, but now we have one factor of X in the denominator. And then X to the negative two would be one over two factors of X in the denominator. So that's kind of how the negative and zero exponents work. Um, so they're gonna t the, the rule that they're going to tell you is anything to the zero power equals one, which we just kind of showed. It didn't really matter what x was, right? X could have been five, one times five times five times five, right? X, then five squared would be one times five times five. Five to the first would be one times five. Five to the zero would be one times no factors of five, just one. 5 to the negative 1 would be 1 over 5. 5 to the negative 2 would be 1 over 5 times 5, or, or 1 over 25. So that's kind of how that exponential pattern works. And then the other rule they'll tell you is a to the negative n equals 1 over a to the n. And of course, a can't be 0 because you're not allowed to divide by 0. And the power 0 to the 0 is undefined. Um, this is the only thing, this is the only thing that to the zero power that you can't do to the zero power zero to the zero is undefined anything else to the zero is one okay so evaluate each expression 6.7 to the zero power well anything to the zero power equals one easiest one of the day Um, another thing to keep in mind is when it says evaluate, keep the key ingredient of that word is value. Evaluate means find the value. So whenever it says evaluate, your answer is going to be a number. If it says solve, then it should be like X equals a number. Um, if it says simplify, then it'll be an expression. But if it says evaluate, then your answer is going to be a number. So let's look at B. Um, negative two to the negative fourth power. The negative four power really just means that we're gonna take whatever the base is, and it's the whole parentheses here, because the negative four power is connected to the parentheses. And it puts that many factors in the denominator. So boom, we're gonna have negative two to the positive fourth power. And then what's left on top, just a one. So one way to interpret the, the, negative, the negative part of the exponent is 
the neg anytime you see a negative exponent you can one way to one way to like process that negative exponent and make it go away is to move um, move the whole power across the fraction bar. So if it was on the top, it would go to the bottom. If it was on the bottom, it would go to the top. So move the power across the fraction bar. Um, moving the, the power across the fraction bar removes the negative sign. Right, so when we move this whole power across the fraction bar into the denominator, it just takes away the negative from the exponent. Notice that it didn't take away the negative from the two. It doesn't change the base. It just takes the exact same base, moves it downstairs. When you move it downstairs, it, it makes the changes the um, sign of the exponent. Any power you take, if you move it across the fraction bar, it changes the sign of the exponent. Right, so, so um, that's one good way to remember is like anytime you move a power like from the numerator down to the denominator, it changes the sign of the exponent, only the exponent. From the bottom to the top, it just changes the sign of the exponent. All right, let's simplify this. Now, this is going to be a part where you have to, I'm going to teach you. Um, I'm going to try to clarify something that I said a little while ago, which is that the exponent is only applies to the thing that it's immediately to the left of, right? So this zero exponent, what's immediately to the left of it? X. So this zero exponent only applies to the X. It doesn't apply to the four. If, it, if we wanted it to apply to the four, we would have to write it like this. Right, because now the zero, what's immediately to the left of the zero up here, the parentheses. That means that whatever's in the parentheses is the base. So this right here would, do, would equal one. But for this part right here, this turns into x to the zero is one. So this is four times one. So only the x to the zero part becomes one. This is four times x to the zero, so four times one. Well, four times one is just four, right? Um, but one of the rules that we use when we're simplifying um, is that um, you can't have any negative exponents or zero exponents. They can only be positive exponents in a simplified answer, right? So if you have any negative exponents, we need to move them across the fraction bar to change the sign of the exponent. So all we have to do is move um, this power upstairs, and then the negative part goes away. So technically, this is like 1 times y to the minus 3, so you're still over 1. But anything divided by 1 is just itself. So we just brought the y to the minus 3 upstairs, and that made the exponent become positive. And the other thing that you had to watch out for is that the zero power only applied to the X and not the four. Uh, okay, so negative nine to the zero power, what's that one gonna be? Yeah, anything to the zero power is one. And since what's immediately to the left of the exponent is parentheses, that means everything in the parentheses is the base. So this whole thing gets to equal one. If there was something else outside the parentheses out here, then that would still be there. It would be that times one. About number two, three to the negative three power. We're not allowed to have negative exponents in our, in our answers. So that means that we need to, this is, this is essentially over one right now, because anything divided by one is itself. We need to move it downstairs to make that exponent positive. 
And if you think about it, it's also one times that upstairs. That's why there's always a one up here. Um, but we move the, the, the power downstairs and that becomes three to the positive three. And then since it tells us to evaluate, we need to say what number this equals. So three to the third power means three times three times three, which is 27. So this would be one, one 27th. Now this one's a little bit tricksy because negative five really means Negative one times five. So the when you see one like this, negative five to the zero power, one way to remember it is that is that only the thing directly to the left of the exponent is affected by the exponent. And the only thing that's directly to the left is the five. Um, what was going to be the other way? Uh, let's see. If yeah, so the the negative doesn't get counted here, right? This is because negative. Oh, the other way was think about order of operations. Think about order of operations. Are you the negative here is like is basically a negative one multiplied by five. And then the exponent, but you, you have to do the exponent before the multiplication, right? So you have to do five to the zero is one. So that what you really get is negative one times one. And then, so that's just negative one, right? Negative one times one is negative one. And then, uh, let me come down here a little bit. So that means we got negative one over two to the negative two power. Can't have a negative exponent, so we need to move this power upstairs. That'll change the sign of the exponent. So then we'll have negative one times two to the positive two power. And then two to the second power is four times negative one is negative four. And then for this one, number four, we've got three to the negative two times X to the negative five over Y to the zero. All right, so this is both of these powers up top have negative exponents. So that means they're both gonna go downstairs. So I just wanna remind myself that this is one times that stuff because when they go downstairs, the one stays upstairs. So when we bring three to the minus two downstairs, it becomes three to the positive two. When we bring X to the negative five downstairs, it becomes X to the positive five. And then we still got y to the zero. But now let's evaluate these. There's a, two of these powers we can evaluate, like actually find the, the number it equals. Three squared is three times three, so that's nine. X to the fifth, we can't do anything about that, but y to the zero is one, so times one. So our answer is just one over nine x to the fifth.
So this is that slide again. Um, and basically this gives you the, uh, in words, to multiply powers with the same base, add their exponents. An example with numbers, four to the six times four to the third is four to the six plus three, is four to the ninth. And then the algebraic rule, basically. Multiplying things with the same base, add the exponents. So same thing for, um, for the quotient and powers. If you're doing a quotient, to divide powers with the same base, subtract their exponents, right? Top minus bottom. Um, four to the sixth over four to the third is four to the sixth minus three, four to the third power. And then here's the algebra version of it. And then they remind you that A can't be zero because we're not allowed to divide by zero. So you subtract the exponents top from bottom. Power of a power, you multiply the exponents like so. Okay, so you need to have like at least, it. What actually, whichever of these three works best for you, the words, the numbers, or the algebra, needs to be in your notes. Okay, so, um, but maybe just leave yourself a little room to go back and fill that in. Um, look, at, um, just like you pause the video right here and, and write that down in your notes because I want to get into the, I don't want this lesson to take a million years. So um, simplify each expression, write your answer using only positive exponents. Okay, so three to the second times three to the sixth. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write the middle step here that, that like most people would just do in their heads. Three to the two plus six. Like most people would just do this part in their head. Three to the eighth power. Notice that it, it says simplify instead of evaluate, right? If it said evaluate, then we wouldn't write our answer as three to the eighth. We would figure out what number that really equals. Simplify means we can leave it as an expression. So we can leave this as three to the eighth. We don't have to actually figure out what three to the eighth power is. Okay, uh, what about for uh, B? This is quotient power, quotient of powers. So we're going to subtract the exponents. So I'm going to kind of I'm going to write this one out. Negative four to the second over negative four to the seventh. You see how they have parentheses around the negative four? That that's one way to remember that if they don't remember when we had negative five to the zero and the zero power only acted on the five. Here, if you want it to act on the negative as well, it has to be in parentheses. So, um, so that's why this one was, this was negative one instead of positive one. Negative, if we did this, that would equal positive one. Okay, so for for this, we're doing quotient of powers. So this would be negative 4 to the 2 minus 7, which is negative 4 to the negative 5. So 2 minus 7 would be negative 5. Well, we, we can't have a negative exponent, so that means we need to move our base downstairs. And it becomes negative four to the positive fifth power. And we can leave it like that because we have a, a only positive exponents now. All right, and then for C, this is a power to a power power of a power. So in this case, we would multiply the exponents. So this would be z to the negative 12. But remember that we can't have negative exponents in our simplified answer. So that means we need to move the base downstairs. And that takes away the negative from the exponent.
again, I'm going to have to apologize because this is a really long lesson. But it had to be. There was no other way around it. Okay, I'm going to we'll do those for later. Power of a product. Remember, this is when um, if you have two things that are multiplied, the, the exponent comes inside to each factor. Right? Same thing with a quotient. The exponent comes to the numerator and to the denominator. Okay, so let's look at an exa some examples where we do these. Okay, so we got negative um, 1.5y to the second. So that the we can think about this as on, on this one, you kind of get to pick because the negative is inside the, the um, parentheses, it gets included in the power. But you can write it like this, negative 1.5 squared times y squared. And then you could think, all right, well, negative 1.5 times, and actually we could leave it like that because um, it doesn't say evaluate. It just says to write your answer using positive exponents. So we could honestly just leave our answer like that. Um, but it would be a little bit simpler um, if we if but if you remember that that even this parentheses right here, this first power is actually a power of a product because that's actually negative one times one point five. Right, so then you would get negative one squared times 1.5 squared times y squared. And the negative one squared is one. So then 1.5 squared y squared would be a more simplified answer, technically. But we could just do. 1.5 times 1.5, and I think that's 2.25. So another way, another correct answer is, would be if you wrote 2.25y squared. But either one of these would be correct. And honestly, even this one, I wouldn't take off points. But any one of these three right here would be a good, uh, would be a, an acceptable answer for this teacher. Okay, now part B. Um, this is going to give us, let me change colors. This is the, 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 the exponent is going to come into both of these, right? So then we're going to get a to the third power over negative 10 to the third power. And we could leave it like this. I would accept that, but it's easy enough for me to do negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10. It would be negative 1,000. 10 times 10 is 100, times another 10 is 1,000, but you had three negatives, so it'd be negative. So another good way to, to answer this would be, actually the best way would probably be, because you'd be over negative 1,000, but it's better to say the, entire, the sign of the entire fraction. If it was a cubed over negative 1,000, positive, a cubed would be positive in this case, that would be negative, so it, the whole fraction would be negative. So you could just write negative out front, a cubed over a thousand. But like I said, either, any one of these three, I wouldn't be taking off points on this assignment. Okay, now C, it has a combination of things, right? C, for it has a quotient. So the, the fourth power is going to come inside to the top and to the bottom. But the top is a product, right? So we have to be like this. I didn't change ink color. A bad, bad boy. So then, then the fourth power would come into each of these because that is a a power of a product. So then you would have three to the fourth times d to the fourth over two to the fourth. And then 
it's easy enough for us to do three to the fourth, three times three times three times three. After a while of doing, of teaching algebra one and algebra two, you start to remember these things. Three to the fourth is 81. Two to the fourth is 16. <clears throat> well, I can teach you kind of a little shortcut on this one. So on D, um, you would you would say, all right, I have a quotient going on here. So the negative five power is going to go to the top and to the bottom, right? So this would be two x to the negative five over three to the negative five. But then think about this. Upstairs, I have a 2x to the negative 5. Can't have negative exponents, right? So I need to move this base downstairs. That makes the exponent become positive 5. Um, down, I have 3 to the negative 5 in the denominator. Uh, that needs to move up and become 3 to the positive 5. So, um, and then, so if you think about it, like the negative here just like flipped over this fraction so when you see a negative a negative exponent to a fraction you could the negative exponent you can just say reciprocal because the top's going to have to go to the bottom and the bottom's going to have to go to the top that's what a negative exponent means so basically um we just that's kind of like what we did we just flipped it over and then did the fifth power so in, if you have the negative five power on a fraction Flipping it over to gets rid of the negative, and then you just bring the fifth power to each thing. Three to the fifth power, I think it's 243, but I'm not super sure. But the fifth power is going to come inside to the two and to the x, right? So we're going to have three to the fifth over two to the fifth times x to the fifth, which three to the fifth, pretty sure it's 243. 2 to the 5th is 32. And the, the, the neat thing is, when you're looking at 243 over 32, you don't even have to, you don't even have to wonder if it simplifies, because we know it doesn't. Because uh, 243 is just 5 factors of 3. 32 is just 5 factors of 2, and 3s and 2s don't cancel out. Um, let me see if this is good enough. Um, okay, we're going to stop there. I'm going to go over the last two. There's two more examples, but I'll just go. I'm going to go over those during our next class. So um, let me go stop this recording.